Here we're going to look at a slightly more unusual question, which is 2003, question 9, part A. Now, it's not super hard, but it is a little bit weird, and we don't often come across some of the topics involved in this one. So it's worth knowing just in case. Now, rectangular triangle, can have a look through this, tilt it over on its side. So we can do a little bit of a diagram of it here. There it is there. And there's our water level. Actually, that really should be our tank there. We ignore that a little bit. Okay. And we know that's three, we know that's one, and this is all of our water here. So what have we got to figure out here? We want to show the depth is here. Figure out what the depth is. Actually, we're even told us it's three over root 10. That's kind of nice. We know where we're going. Now, this bit of it isn't too bad, okay? And it gets a little bit funkier when we get into parts two and three. Now, what we know is that the whole tank is rectangular, okay? So we can actually convert this problem to 2D. All right, um, it's a bit easier to work with. You could do it in 3D if you like extra work. So what we know is at the beginning, there is our tank, all of our water, and then it was tipped over like this. And there is our water, okay? The areas are equal. The tank didn't, didn't tip over anything you know, along the axis that would be going in this way. So the area there is equal to the area there. Well, we do know a little bit about this one. We know that that is one, and we know that that's three. So the area of this guy is three by one by a half, because it's only half full, okay? The area of this one, now there's a few ways you can do it, but we want to think of it, if we go is half, call it the base, by the height, perpendicular height, which is d. So now we're kind of getting into the, the right scheme of things. Now, just multiply all this one out there, that's 1.5, and that is bd over 2. So we're sort of getting there. What about the base here? Well, we know that's 1, we know that's 3. Now, if we had a triangle, pop it over here, that's 1, that's 3. And this here, the base, is the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared, just using Pythagoras, and that's root 10. So we have 1.5 equals root 10 d over 2. Bring the 2 up there, we get 3. Bring this one down here, we get d equals 3 over root 10. All right, QED. Shown. So that bit wasn't so bad, but it does get a little bit trickier as we move along here. Now, thrust is the one we don't often see in this one here, and that is equal to pressure by the area. Okay, so let's have a little look at part two. Show the thrust on the base of the tank is that. So again, we have a nice little one. They're gonna show us where we're gonna go. So if we think of this, if we just have a look at this little thing here and there's our tank there. Okay. Tipped over a little bit. So we're looking at the thrust, and we look at it from the side here, thrust going up there on the base. Okay, so we know that that's, a, that's three and that's two. So we know the area is three by two is six. Okay, so that's not so bad. What about the pressure? Well. If we look at this, as it goes across, the pressure is even, okay? So it's moving across this axis. So we need to find the average pressure, okay? You can see the pressure is very low here. It's very high here. So what we want is, just make a little bit of a line around that one that came over. Thrust is the average pressure by the area. Now, that is going to convert, okay? So again, pressure is equals rho gh, all right? So that is going to be rho by g by the average depth. h is just the distance below the surface by the area. Now this becomes a bit more manageable because the average depth on this one is of course, okay, the whole thing is D, 
to the average depth. It's just half G. D over 2. So, thrust is 1000 by G by D over 2 by 6. Sub in D, 1000 G, and D is double check, that's root 3 over 2. So, we're just going to separate these out. 3 over root 10 by 6. Bring all of that together. And again, we can kind of see even just doing these ones nice and quickly. The 10, this is worth knowing, root 10, 1000 divided by root 10 is going to be 100 root 10. All right. Put a few brackets in there by G. Um, 6 divided by half is 3. So that's going to be by 9. All right. So we end up with 900 root 10 G. If we stick that into our calculator. So we have 900 by square root of 10. Make sure you kind of do that extra little one coming out there. So it's just the root of 10 by 9.8. And that is going to equal 27.9 kilonewtons. Okay, because thrust is a force. All right. And then we have part two. Now, so again, not too bad once you understand per thrust. It's then it becomes a reasonably simple area of volume question. The next one is a little bit funkier, okay? Because what we're looking for here, all right, so again, it's 2003, 9A. This is part three. This is on the base of the tank, okay? So, our, our, sorry, on the vertical side walls. So again, if we do a little bit of a diagram of a tank, let's see, can we get this nicely in 3D? Okay, so there it is tipped over. Okay, it's this wall here. All right, what kind of thrust is on that one? Well, first of all, first things first, is the area here, we're actually only using half of it. Okay, so the area of the vertical. Okay, so we know there's one high and it's three long. Is one by three by a half, because we've only got it half full. So there's only pressure on half of the side of it. All right, so that is kind of step number one, and that equals, of course, three over two. Now, what about the thrust? So this is kind of interesting. It's pushing on a triangle. And if I just do a little bit of a diagram here, we'll just look at the side on its own. Okay, where is it pushing on it? Okay, we could say kind of half the depth, but there's quite a lot more going across here than there is down there. So if you imagine those all individual little bits pushing, there's a lot more up on the top. So we can't just say it's half of it. And we need to bring in the idea of a centroid. Okay. And this is one you may not have come across. Um, if we divide each side in half, okay, that is our centroid. Okay and we go perpendicular from it. Now, we're not going to be doing this as a geometrical question because we can do this much easier by maths, all right? If we have x1 and y1, so if we had coordinates on this, x2, y2, and x3, y3, we know that centroid is at points x1 plus x2 plus x3 all over 3, and the same for y. Now, so we can do that. So let's go back and look at our little triangle. We'll see if we can get it down here and then we'll do our maths on the other side. So this is our little triangle. Now remember, what we really need is how far down to go to calculate the pressure. So all I need is the y's. So let's just arbitrarily set this at zero, zero. All right, and that becomes x2. And how high up is that? Well, it's d. All right, we'll just scoot up there so you can see it. And of course, this one is going to be x3 and d, because this height here is d. All right, I just don't care what the x are, that's why I haven't bothered figuring them out. And technically speaking, that's x1, but we won't worry about that. So what I end up with here is, who cares? 
on the x-coordinates and 0 plus d plus d over 3 on the y-coordinates. Okay, so therefore, if we look at our centroid, our centroid is at something 2d over 3. That is the coordinates of it. Now, got to be a little bit careful here. When we're looking for our pressure, our equation, of course, is rho gh. And h is the depth. It's a little sneaky twist you can kind of get caught up on. Okay, So our centroid, come back to this one here, is 2d over 3 up. But of course, we care about how far down it is. So in which case, we have 1,000 for rho by g by d over 3. All right, because it's d over 3 down from the center of the water. Now, now that we have that one, we can be able to figure out our thrust. It becomes fairly easy. Thrust. OK, pressure by area. So that is, take this one here. It is 1,000 g by d over 3 and multiply by our area, and that was 3 over 2. Let's begin to figure all this out. 1000g by 1 over 3 by 3 over root 10 by 3 over 2. Cancel those guys. And we end up with 100 root 10. Okay. Bring the root 10 up into this. By g, that goes to 1, by 3 over 2. So, let's see what we're going to get here. And we just begin to figure this one out here. So I will get 3 over 2 is 1.5. So that is 150 root 10 g. And again, we'll stick it into numbers. Okay. 150 by root 10 by 9.8. And we are going to get 4,649 newtons. Okay, just rounding up to the nearest newton. So that is our thrust. Straightforward, once you can get this, not necessarily a concept you come across very regularly. So it's worth understanding how we do here. And the key thing is we can use this equation to figure out where the centroid is. That tells us how far up it is. And of course, we can, we're concerned about how far down it is. So if it's two thirds d up, it's a third d down. And that's what we used over here.